removal process may be initiated. But after our committee meeting yesterday, the district uh, will be pursuing a different path. Um, I will be working with the advisors and deans through the week, and I will have an update for you all next week. Uh, lastly, I told Alan that he would be given space to address these violations. I will also be pushing uh, that back till next Friday as well, just because we have a busy schedule and nothing is being pursued today. So that is it for me. Thank you. Um, PR yeah. committee, we did not meet. Uh, we're just going to be, uh, I'm going to be sending out emails to uh, to the individuals uh, that are on that committee uh, with assistance for uh, scheduling some posts on our Instagram and such. Um, SAB, Taylor, or well, James. Uh, no new updates. Policy advisory, Re. We have no meeting until April 6th, but I will tell you, this is kind of another note. I have been asked to join the Graduate Student Advisory Board and we meet on April 19th. Uh, faculty, Student Affairs, that's you, Re. We met this week and um, Will and Taylor, uh, Dr. Simpkins and Taylor Tackett were both there to talk about the cross-functional task force and the, the ideas about um, faculty members with the workload, the office hours, it's just letting us know about this. I know we all are well aware of this and we're all supportive and did a resolution, of course, to support our faculty, but it was just a, a discussion and that's mainly what it was. Mm -hmm. yeah, go ahead. Um, Taylor and I met with the cross-functionality task force on Thursday morning at 8.30. Um, and we discussed advancing just that. We're planning on doing some surveying. We're talking about doing some town halls, talk about students, get student perspective on this reduction in workload and so and how it affects the quality of their education. And so I um, just want to let everyone know that work is continuing. And if you want any more specific updates, I'm happy to provide them. Re uh, Indigenous Student Resource Committee, uh, Naomi, Paul, Alex. Naomi um, first. Yeah, I'll start out. That's OK with y'all. So um, as we are now aware of the indigenous remains that are now on campus, um, there was a smudging ceremony held with that a lot of the NISA members were able to um, advocate out for uh, other indigenous students on campus that um, needed that healing space. So we were very thankful for the institution being able to grant that to us. Um, and it was very, it was very heavy for sure. Um, and we also met again to talk about the equal resolution that I do believe is on the agenda today. Um, and then Paul and I also were able to meet with Dr. Barone and um, just speak about how we are going to move forward with our student incentive package for Indigenous students, um, you know, interacting through a survey to find out what we can do better to support them here on campus, given the totality of harm that has been caused to them from this institution. Um, gentlemen. Oh, thank you, Dan. I uh, just wanted to say that we looked over the survey and the survey is a good one. It is a longer one. And so it's definitely good that we're preparing some good incentives to get folks to take this survey. Um, and I want to say that I am pleased to hear that the university is cooperating with the efforts to repatriate these remains. The idea that we had them in the first place is very troubling. Um, and I plan to continue to observe this process and hope that we see it through. And so, um, yep, that's all I have. I won't repeat what Naomi said. Alex? I have no updates except for the resolution. Thank you. Naomi? Um, this is something that's been voiced to me by uh, many students, and it's a concern that I feel I do need to voice to you guys as well about these remains being released and you guys becoming aware of them. I advise you to please tread lightly on the subject and to be very respectful and to make sure that you do not take up space. Um, this is something that is very traumatizing for us. Um, we joke, you know, as a coping mechanism that, oh, the United States is a huge, you know, burial ground for our people, but this is a reality for our students now. We are literally walking on our ancestors, um, children, women, grandpas, uncles, like we don't know. Um, and that's really heavy for us to carry around on a daily basis. Um, so just please tread lightly with that. Please be respectful to your indigenous students, friends, family, whatever you may call them. Um, and just try to 
ask what they need or how you could be present for them in these spaces and provide the space for them as well. Um, thank you. Thank you. Open floor or is open one rem reminder uh, one. Keep it to try to keep it to one minute because of the, the presentation. Oh, two minutes actually. Go ahead, Chad. Cool. Uh, I just had one thing that I forgot to to do for uh, chair updates. Um, whoever attends the next uh, fat or ooh, president's cabinet meeting, um, there will be a vote on the campus closure policy that we have seen for this entire school year. Um, they're gonna they're gonna push that. So if you have any recommendations that you would like to have changed anything at all, now is the time to do that. Not during that meeting. And Paul. I want to say that uh, the resolutions I spoke about last week, I have, I'm still interested in writing them, though I don't want to write them alone. You know, I want to collaborate with others on this council. My invitation for collaboration remains open. I've been happy enough to collaborate with Mike, uh, with Dan, Naomi and Alex, uh, and I'd just like to see that broadened. And so please get with me and talk to me about what you're interested in or, you know, I got stuff I'm working on. I'd love to work with you. And finally, I wanted to offer a uh, you know, another condemnation of the inaction on addressing the hate speech and historical revisionism espoused by Mr. Williams. Um, we haven't meaningfully addressed it, and insofar as we haven't, uh, this this council continues to condone that kind of rhetoric and genocide denial. And so, we need to take it seriously. The community called on us to do it last week, and I and I saw that we posted that hollow statement on our door, and it and it's it hurts to walk through that door when I see it because it's it's shameful. I'm ashamed to tell people that I'm on this council when that subject comes up. And I don't want to be ashamed to be on this council. I want to be able to tell people, yeah, I'm in student government. I'm in the student government that gave money to the food pantry. I'm in the student government that acquired school supplies. I'm in the student government that made all these stands against the tax on human rights. I don't want to have to, you know, keep this kind of company. We need to take this seriously. Um, so. All right, thank you. Uh, we are at <clears throat> 245, so we move on to the next item of business, which is going to be item A of new business, and then we will go back to any other additional round floor updates. Um, uh, do you mind if I take over and introduce? Because <clears throat> uh, they're doing budget requests, do you mind if I introduce kind of what's going on for this? Go ahead. Yes, so um, this is just um, a budget request like we did for pre did so previously. Um, so um, we are having um, Albany and Houston from the Student Honors Council coming in and um, presenting for us. Um, quick reminder to anyone on this council, if you know student organizations who need funding and they've gone through the proper channels um, that which we're bound to, please let me know and I will um, assist them on that journey. So uh, take it to go ahead. Um. There we go. All right. Um, let me share my screen. And before we get started, I just wanted to thank everyone for allowing me and Kristen to be here um, to share um, this idea that a lot of us have been working really hard on um, and trying to put this event on. Um, so, yeah. All right. Well, let me get my life together, if at all possible. OK. The things are going away. OK, here God. All right, I'm going to turn that off. Oh, so our event is just a spring ball. Um, kind of celebrating the end of the semester. Um, even though this is put on by honors, we want to invite um, everyone on campus and involve some other clubs and stuff. Um, so yeah, you can go on to the next slide, Mike. All right, so um, just to give you guys a quick rundown of what we want the uh, event to look like. Uh, the main purpose of this event is to help us kind of uh, build community, not just between the honors program, but the honors program, a lot of undergraduate studies um, and the campus kind of as a whole. And um, we're also looking to kind of connect our alumni with some of our current students as kind of a networking opportunity so that our students have an opportunity to make professional connections as well. Um, 
And uh, another big part of this that kind of goes with the theming is we wanted to be kind of in tune with the whole uh, Earth Day concept, which will kind of be happening at the same time. And because of this, we did partner with the Auraria Sustainability Project um, to kind of hone in on that. Um, so in terms of our activities, we're going to be uh, including a lot of food, music, dancing, a photo booth, and of course, those networking opportunities. Next slide, please. All right, um, so these are just kind of um, general information about our event. Um, the main one I want to touch on is we want it to be inclusive. Um, and normally a ball, you'd be wearing fancy dresses and all that stuff, but not everyone can afford um, that. So we want to make sure that they can just like wear whatever they want, uh, feel comfortable. Um, and and um, we are in talks of working with, um, again, I think it's a part of Aurora Sustainability and their clothing um, area where they donate um, so that people can kind of pick out clothes and stuff like that to wear to the event. All right, so this is kind of the invitation that we've worked uh, to put together. Uh, I think it was Marissa who worked really hard to make this beautiful, beautiful poster for us um, that kind of uh, encapsulate, encapsulates the theming and the advertising that we would like to go with for this event. Um, so we're working a lot with posters and flyers. We're using our Instagram account to kind of push this event. We want to utilize our alumni that we're still in touch with. Um, and we're working with the UCD and CCD honors programs as well, especially um, with CCD. We have a really good connection with their honors staff since a lot of their students end up coming to Metro and being a part of our program when they are done at the community college. Um, and we're trying to hand out as many direct invitations to different student organizations as possible, again, because we wanna cover as much ground as we can and include as many students as possible. And we also set up an honors canvas page to help kind of push out the information to at least the people in our program. I wanted to add something uh, for the Instagram. We kind of wanna use this not just to put the invitation but kind of come up with cool ideas to get them excited uh, for the event um, and um, just like post things about the event so that more people are excited and we can do it again. So I'll go over this. Um, so how it's uh, working out as far as planning the event, we are working on coming, um, working together and putting together an events committee that way it's not just the five of us on SHG, like decorating and all that stuff. We want people um, to feel free to come and help out. Um, and we also want to work with the theater department, um, whether that's with ideas or just using some stuff they already have. That way we're reusing things um, and they can be a part of our um, just a committee as well. Um, not all of this is very exciting, but um, so during the event um our jobs as shc members is to kind of just make everyone feel comfortable um coordinate with like the music and make sure everyone is good on food and stuff like that um and just make sure students feel comfortable networking with one another um and then obviously the events committee and shc will work to kind of clean up so that's kind of just our plan on how this will go um, so here's just like a general um, spreadsheet. Um, so the reason I put decorations is we want this events committee to feel free to bring ideas to the table. Um, so we want to get their like voices on what they want to see there um, and not just throw things together. Um, we want to have like everyone's voice in it. Um, we also want to do prizes and stuff like that. Just make it more fun, not just a dance. Um, we've talked about doing games where we hand out stuff um, with the DJ. So, yeah. Um, and then another big thing is parking validation. Because this event is on a weekend, um, not everyone can necessarily afford parking, especially on the weekend where it is much more expensive than um, normal. So we um, came with the, up with the idea to ask um, AHEC for validation codes um, and stuff like that. So, yes. And then we need a dance floor because we cannot dance on carpet.
Any questions? All right. Yep. Yeah, we'll move into questions. Um, we're going to go until three o'clock, so we have about seven minutes. Uh, Ree, go ahead, and then Paul. Can graduate students in the graduate programs come, or is this all for undergraduate students? There we go. Um, honestly, I think um, we just want to make it very inclusive. So as long as you're part of the community at MSU, um, yeah, we just want to make sure everyone comes. And this is kind of our last thing before finals. So yeah, I hope that answers your question. Paul, go ahead. A couple comments and a question. I really like the inclusivity. I like the sustainability. I love the aesthetic, and I think this is going to be a really good event. Um, maybe I missed it in the presentation, but what's what's the monetary ask here at the end of the day? Like, what if you give me a, if you throw a number at me? Mike, can you go to the budget? <laughs> yes, um, it's a little hard to see in the budget, but um, hey. thank you, Mike. Yeah, that part is kind of cut out. It's not on there. Well, we're. Uh, oh, you do you know? I cut it out. Uh, yes, um, it's a little. I think a little under 3000 just parking and stuff like that. Um, um, so yeah, I can send that in there. I didn't realize it cut out because it was so small. So I wanted to make sure y'all can read that. Hey, certainly. But I think it was just under 3000. Yeah, hearing all that, you all have my total support and thanks for putting this presentation together in this event. I think it'll be a good way to end the semester for our students and give them, you know, good way to close it out. And uh, and thank you for bringing the opportunity to support this effort to the student government. We appreciate it. Also, if you want, I can unshare my screen and give you the exact number. All right, I'm going to do that. While Albany does that, Mike. So yes, um, thank you guys so much for coming in and presenting. Um, so just inform the council as per our um, bylaws, this vote will be set for next week. Um, all materials relevant will be sent out to all the council um, to review before that vote next week. So, and it requires a two thirds majority to uh, pass. So. Additional question for Mike. Yeah. Um, we have a specific allocation for this in our budget, correct? Correct, yes. And this is the same allocation that we use for uh, the Blair's fraternity. Yes, so okay. that allocation stands at 12 grand. That's 7% um, of our overall budget. Um, we have nine grand left. Heard, thank you. Yes. Uh, if you So we're asking for $2,917. There you go. Armando. Um, just a clarifying question in terms of the budget. Can you, where did we plan on pulling the money for the NISA um, event from? So um, as has, the resolution was written, um, that was not pulled from this okay. specific allocation. Um, that was pulled from our general fund. Okay. So yes. Okay. and. Um, they didn't submit up. They submit a paper, like a file version of what the submission online is. So that may have gotten confusing. I don't know if I got to you, but they have they have a document form of what. So yes. Okay. I, it, it's been filled out, and they've done all the relevant stuff. So for record keeping, can we just can you work with them to just do it online? For record keeping, can you work with them to just do it online so we have everything? Cool. Thank you. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Any other questions, comments, anything at all? This time is still y'all's if you'd like to use it. Did have a question for Armando. Um, so due to the fact that this event is like in three weeks, um, I'm working with Meredith to get stuff ordered soon. And part of the thing I'm worried about is like the dance floor and we're asking for half. So I was wondering if you can reimburse if you choose to give us funding and we order it. So I was just wondering. Do you, are you using a campus account or are you using personal funds to put that half down? I believe that if we do this, it will be um, from honors. We'll be using an honors card. OK, I think that may be easier to work with. HR typically doesn't like reimbursements. Um, let me send an email to our finance manager to see is it honors department or is it your honors clubs 800 account i don't know if you know those terms it's the shc student organization or student organization card so it's an 800 or, card yeah so the, it's a card you would use from cmei or is this a, a card of, from honors yeah. honors it's like our honors card 
but I think it's like a CME, CMEI card. Yeah. Okay. I will, I'll loop you and I can get an answer to you by Tuesday at the latest about reimbursement. No, that's perfect. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yep. All right. Last call. Boom. All right. We got two minutes before we have our public comment. So if there are any other additional open floor roundtable updates, please tell me now or we'll move on. Paul. Um, actually, I, retra I retract that. Sorry. All right. Um, advisor updates. If you'd like to start now, we got one minute. We don't have, we don't have too much um, in terms of elections. We have a whopping five as of the last time I found out. Is there any new? OK, there well, right there, right there's a whopping less than 10, which is still not good. Um, so all of those who said that they are going to rerun, please do. Um, and yeah, uh, as NISA and Native Indigenous uh, already mentioned, that letter went out to Native Indigenous students and they have been working a lot. So please give them grace, as Naomi had mentioned earlier, because this has been an ongoing battle for the whole semester that they have been quiet about because it's a lot of moving cogs that they've been working through trying to figure out what to do. Um, other than that, Dr. Brown is at a conference and I am working diligently with elections teams to try to get things done. Um, we are potentially moving the town hall to the 12th. That's just an update I did want to get on record. Um, we are just waiting to finalize the room for that, but we are looking to confirm that the date will be moved to the 12th, so that way all candidates with the new extension can present themselves and it won't be an unfair advantage. But we still will have our coffee and cookies on the 4th at the 5th in the morning. Okay, that's all. Uh, we, oh. We're going to go to public comments super fast. Oh, yeah, it's just it's a quick question. OK, so um, I get Chad or Armando. Um, so I will be graduating in the fall, but I'm still going to come back in the spring to take um, a, a class that would just look really good on my resume. So it's I'll still be enrolled. Is that OK that I run still then? I'll just be graduated. OK, so you see, just making sure. Cool. All right, public comment time. If there are any members of the public that are present that would like to use some public comment, you would have we have this time locked and allotted out from 3 to 3.15. Um, if you are here for public comment, please make yourself known in person or put your name in the chat and we will let you use that time that we've allocated for you. All right, going once. Oh, is that a member of the public over there? Hello, Go ahead, introduce yourself, please. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm William Coates, and uh, I'm a freshman. This is my first semester at MSU, and I just stopped by to say hello and see how, you know, things are ran at the student <clears throat> student government level. And thank you, Chad, and Chad for inviting me. So, thank you. Thank you for showing up. Um, if there are any other members of the public that would like to use this time between 3 and 3.15, it is your time, but we will continue with business. Just let us know that you would like to use that time. Uh, sure. We had a member of the public come into our office uh, yesterday, and they asked me, what has the student government done? What have we even done? And so... I reflected on all the stuff we've done and we've done a lot of really good stuff. Everyone, thank you. And so I just thought about like, let's let's um, consider more ways to like summarize what has been done and get that out to the public so they understand what, we're, what we've done, what we're capable of doing. Um, and just to kind of echo that comment from the public is like, what is student government even doing? And I'm like, yeah, well, I'll stop my comment on this and just repeat what they said. Elections. Your, annou your announcement. Yeah. Um, just reiterate Armando's. Uh, so election application deadline has been extended to the 6th of April. 
uh, Coffee with the Candidates, April 5th at 9 a.m. And we are very much looking into moving the town hall on the 12th. But you'll get that information if you turn in your application. All right. Oh, Mike. Chad, I believe we have Chad. I believe we have more than eight five candidates currently. What is that number up to now today? We have eight. I have decided to run again and I have all the signatures needed. I just need my professor's signature. Cool. All right. Well then Gabe, if there's no other members of the public. Gabe, the floor is yours for your OER task force presentation. Unless we need to wait until that no. specific time. Okay. okay. So I'm Dr. Reagan. We're waiting on Valeria. Yeah. Excellent. So what we what we can yes, Paul. Maybe while we wait for some of the expiration of public comment, we can take a short uh, five minute hiatus for yes. bathroom and all that. Yeah. All right. We will take a quick five minute break. We will return at three ten. Thank you, friends. The chats. They've both. They've I vote against it. <laughs> I veto. You have, you have no veto. Okay, don't worry about it. What what if you Yeah. Is that their new like reimagined possibles the change maker thing? I think I don't know if it's yeah, yeah, they they changed it. It's a new campaign. Rebranding their whole yeah. show. No.
All right, friends, welcome back. It is 310. Um, Gabe, how are we looking on this next item of business? We're good. They are Excellent. here. The floor is yours. Awesome. And so now um, we have Dr. Reagan and Valeria from the OER folks to come give us a presentation. And so it's all you. So help me uh, figure out if I need to move differently for the microphone. Feel free to advise me Close, closer. Is that good? OK, um, so I'm Emily Reagan. I'm a professor in the Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry. And way back in 2015, I did a redesign of general chemistry with an instructional designer, Alex McDaniel, and he introduced me to open educational resources. And then two years later, I was lucky enough to get involved with the state OER council. And I realized it was important to educate other faculty about open educational resources. And then just this semester, I've had the pleasure of working with Valeria and she'll introduce herself, but she's a student here at MSU Denver. So we wanted to come and share some information and share some upcoming opportunities with you all. Hello, my name is Valeria Castañeda Saucedo. I'm a senior here at MSU Denver studying sociology. Um, I work for the C2 Hub as a research associate under the Scholarship and Retention Center. And this semester I got the opportunity to work with Dr. Reagan on this OER initiative within campus. Let's see. All right, so to begin, we kind of wanted to show um, like the price changes from 1997 to 2018. Also in regards to inflation and how like those prices have changed across like different um, aspects. So as you can see, like hospital services are one of the things that have become like the most expensive since then. But surprisingly, right under that is college textbooks and college tuition, which I think like really, really signifies the importance of kind of the work that OER is trying to do and um, why it's important to try to help when it comes to this stuff. Um, yeah, so this was just kind of like a brief graph of that. Um, and then next we wanted to um, tell what OER is. It's Open Educational Re Resources. Um, they are education materials that can be freely downloaded, edited, and shared to better serve all students. Um, they're there to be revised, reused, remixed, and redistributed. Um, there's specific things like textbooks or um, other things related to that. Um, yeah. OK, so one of the big differences between like a textbook you would get from a publisher, it would have a traditional copyright, right? Just a C with a circle around it, all rights reserved. That means we're not supposed to share copies with we're not supposed to make photocopies and share those with other people like we're limited to what we can do with that work. The open educational resources generally have a Creative Commons license on them. That's that CC on the right hand side. And there's six different Creative Commons licenses and authors can indicate what permissions people have, but they're always free to share with other people. So you could always share copies freely. So that's um, a layer of copyright that makes these open educational resources different than the educational resources uh, that we traditionally think of. I think we can advance to the next slide. Um, so we have an MSU Denver OER web page, and there's also a page under there that's specifically targeted at students. Uh, there's also a page on targeted for faculty. So if you were interested in learning a lot more about that copyright, for example, you could find some information there. Um, one thing that we've been working on over the past few years is a course marking initiative where faculty can let us know if their courses have no cost for materials or a low cost, which we've defined as $40 or less. And the goal is to have that information to students when you're registering for classes so you can have a heads up, oh, hey, I'm not going to have to purchase anything additional for this class. Or if I do have to purchase additional items, it's going to be a more modest amount of money. So just because someone has a class that's marked as no cost, it doesn't mean that the faculty necessarily are using open educational resources, but they might be. That would be one strategy that faculty could use to get to that no cost. 
Um, so we also have information on the web page about where do I find OER, and we put just a few slides in here just in case you're curious where you can find these free resources for your classes. Even if your professor isn't using them, you could find supplemental resources. So um, out of the University of Minnesota, there's an open textbook library, and right now there's more than 1,200 titles listed there, so you can go and search for different subjects and find textbooks that are openly licensed there. So that's a really nice resource. That's a resource I direct faculty to. I lead faculty trainings where I encourage faculty to find a textbook there and they get a $200 stipend if they complete a public review. So if you go poke around there, you'll also see some faculty reviews for many of the textbooks in that open textbook library. And then next slide, we can see another place OpenStax is a major publisher. They're out of Rice University. Um, I use an OpenStax chemistry textbook in the general chemistry class that I teach. And in fact, all of our general chemistry classes are using OpenStax for the textbook. Um, so these OpenStax gets grant funding so that they can produce these textbooks and then they make them free online. Students also could optionally purchase a beautiful hardcover color copy if they like. Um, but it's not required because you can either download the PDF or use it online for free. Um, let's see. And then one other interesting place is LibreText.org. And this functions a little bit more similarly to Canvas in that you, you're clicking through different pages rather than just downloading a whole PDF. But we have um, a professor here, Andy Kerr, in the nutrition department who took an existing nutrition resource and made it much, much better. She added more recent information. She added many citations. And they're now using this text for all of the um, Nutrition 2040 sections, which is a class actually that Valeria took just the year, I think, before they started using the OER. <laughs> so um, there's a lot of re um, other resources available in Libre Text, so that's just why I brought it up. You might be able to find something that you would find interesting or helpful there as well. Okay, so um, at the end of 2021, we did an OER student survey, and I just wanted to share, we wanted to just share a few of the highlights with you. So yeah, a couple of the questions that we asked, the first one being was how familiar are you with open textbooks? And you can see that a uh, majority of the students that did fill out this survey said that they had never heard of open textbooks. 54% um, said that. Well, uh, um, 26% have said that they used part of um, open textbooks in their courses before, but still very like overwhelmingly many students did not know what open textbooks were. And I'll just jump in and say we had also, so we had 601 responses in this 2021 survey. We had done a survey um, in 2019 where we had almost 150 respondents and the number of students who were familiar with OER increased and the number who had never heard of it had decreased just in those two years. So that's kind of interesting. This next question is um, regarding um, in, your career, in your academic career, has the cost of required textbooks caused you to, and then you have different prompts there. Um, some have said take fewer courses, not register to a specific course because of this. Um, and then others have said not purchase the required textbooks, which is the grand majority of them. 35% said that. Um, yeah, I think these kind of also show how important it is to like spread the word about OER and open open textbooks. Let's see. So next slide. Um, what? Oh, sorry, I guess I missed that this one was different. What measures have you taken to reduce your required textbook costs? And you can see that um, a lot of students and actually these percentages I'm realizing we should have updated because because students were were voting for mul multiple responses. We're actually giving you the percentages that are a little lower. So we could send an updated set of these slides. <laughs> I'm realizing I gave you the wrong version, but um, students tend to not buy them from the campus bookstore and attempt to reduce costs. I'm sure you're all familiar with your own strategies, renting textbooks rather than purchasing them, getting digital textbooks. You know, one nice thing about the open educational resources is you get a copy and you can keep it forever. You know, you don't just get it for 180 days or whatever that term, whether you're renting a print copy or a digital copy. So that's another advantage of the open educational resources. So Valeria and I have worked together on um, a 2023 OER student survey, which is currently available. 
Yeah, so that kind of leads us to this semester where we are we are working on this. So we're also hoping to um, present um, to the OER an OER conference that's happening here in Colorado on May 19th. Um, we hope to recruit students from this survey and do kind of focus groups with them to ask them more about their experience when it comes to OER or just like materials, um, school materials. Um, so that's what we're hoping to um, to to present on for the conference, although we're still trying to recruit as many students as possible so we can have yeah, more of a pull to pull from in those focus groups. And I think, yeah, the next slide is about that state OER conference. This is really a cool opportunity. I don't know if anyone's around on May 19th, but if you think this is an interesting, if you're interested in open educational resources, the conference is free. It's at History Colorado, so it's not too far from campus, so relatively easy to get to, and it would include a free lunch. So you're absolutely encouraged to come. Valeria and I um, have been actually accepted to present, although what we're going to be able to talk about depends on whether uh, we get IRB approval <laughs> before we do those focus groups and our time window is running out, but we'll at least be able to talk about our collaboration and some of the work we're doing at MSU Denver. So I'm really excited for this opportunity. Um, also, one more thing to mention was that because of those focus groups, um, Dr. Reagan is, actually has sabbatical in the fall and this is going to become like a bigger project in the fall. Um, so we are also like if any students are interested in being a part of OER, the OER initiative or the OER task force, which um, we wanted to bring up as well. It's kind of made up of um, a lot of faculty from on campus. There's librarians, there's people from MSU Denver and I think also CU Denver. Um, it, there's one person. Yeah, so the librarian, um, you know, is tri-institutional, so she helps us learn the perspective of CU Denver and even the community college a little bit as well. Yeah, so Valeria has been serving on the OER task force. We meet once a month and um, we've been working together on these projects. So Valeria is going to graduate and I am focusing just on OER work in the fall because I got a sabbatical. So instead of you know teaching and doing research and doing OER work, I'm just focused on OER in the fall. So that's a really exciting time to improve some of our systems, maybe make it easier for faculty to get their courses marked, to maybe do an even more robust student survey. And so I really am looking for a student collaborator to help work with me on that. Um, also, we're going to be able to reapply for some grant funding through the state, and that grant is going to be due probably late November or December. And so I hope to come back to you all in the fall and request a letter of support. We got one from you all like in December 2021, and we got a grant that um, has been funding this work for two years, allowing me to give faculty small stipends for participating in those open textbook reviews and faculty learning communities, really to spread the word to faculty so we know to look for these resources and how we can incorporate them into our classes. Perfect. Thank you very much. And I will move on to questions with Paul first. Oh, uh, I want to thank you all for your work. This is fantastic. I can speak as a student who's I've struggled to purchase textbooks. I've borrowed them from the library before I've gone without, you know, and I and um and I wanted to mention uh, in question six when you say um, how students like coped with the lack of available textbooks. I think there's a, there's a minor gap in that. I know personally, I know some students who have um, these quasi legal or illegal methods to obtain these textbooks. And I think that puts the students at risk um, in addition to putting our university at risk if faculty are participating in this at all. Um, and so I commend your work on that and I would Maybe if there's any time in this survey or in the future survey, include that as an option. If especially if it's an anonymous survey, folks will be honest, I think. Um, but other than that, I wanted to comment on I had a student and a friend of mine reach out to me with something that he was really interested in and proud to have learned from one of his open educational resources in a, in a biology class that he's taking here. Um, I've personally benefited from the OER stuff and some of the communication department classes that I'm in. And so it's working. Y'all are doing good work. Um, I appreciate the data driven like approach to this. I think the stipends are a fantastic way to incentivize the adoption of this um, and to really cut costs for students that do have trouble meeting economic uh, means in our in our campus. Um, and I guess my final question is, how are you using the data from these surveys to shape your approach into the future? Well, it's certainly helpful for me to have data to share with faculty because we've we went to school when textbooks were cheaper 
And we went to school when we didn't have to pay for online homework systems. At least some of us are old enough that we kind of missed that window. And so we don't necessarily have an intuitive sense of what the current student experience is. So I feel like that's part of my job is to help educate faculty. Like things are different than they used to be. And maybe it wasn't as big of a deal 20 years ago, but it's really a major problem now, some of these costs. Did I fully answer your um, questions? I think that's satisfactory. And I just wanted to say, if you need a student representative, I'm my place a little full, but I can definitely reach out to you with information about that student that was so enthused about his open educational resource from that biology class. I think he'd be interested in looking Sweet. into this, but uh, thanks again. We'll go to Mike then Ree. Yes, so um, y'all mentioned these open, uh, I forgot what you, the phrase you said, I talked about Cengage and McGraw. Basically, you had to pay for your homework, essentially, and um, I'm part of the business school, um, and the one big complaint about the business school is we can get our textbooks online, but you still pay $100 a class for um, your coursework. That's how, and a lot of the professors in the business department, and more so math department as well, um, that's how they do the grading is through those systems as well. So is there any thought or any kind of um, um, any kind of like mention this in your circles on how that problem could maybe be fixed? Because that's a big problem. Yes, I agree. I'm in chemistry and that's also a discipline that tends to use online homework systems. I created my own online homework system in Canvas and that's what I use in the class that I teach. It did take a lot of time. And so I am supporting faculty like there's um, a group of statistics faculty who are trying to find free online homework solution options. There are some platforms out there. Um, so I think that's a really important area to keep doing more work. We're doing some work on that now, and I feel like it is a little bit of a harder challenge than just the textbook because so much time goes into creating and organizing questions for online homework systems, but there are solutions that are free. And so we're working towards that as well. Re. I am Bree, and I am a master's student with a ways to go, and I'm actually going to run for re-election next year. But regardless of that, if I can help with grant writing, if you need that, I'm a technical writer. I've done grant writing in different roles I've had professionally, so love to help you if you need it. That's Just fantastic. Keep me in mind, and we can keep in touch about that. Yeah, <laughs> we could... Um you know, see if you wanted to be on the OER task force in the fall and then join that subgroup, that would be, or okay. just even we could just loop you into that subgroup. So there's different ways that we could do that. But yeah, that's a fantastic uh, offer. So thank you. Sure, sure thing. Awesome. Any more questions or comments? Anybody? Going, going twice. Let's give them another okay. hand. My comment, sorry. We have a comment? Oh, just let's give them another hand for their good work. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Reagan and Valeria, for coming today and presenting all the wonderful things that you're doing for our students. We really appreciate it all. Um, I will send you all their contact information and everything um, in the chat. Yeah. Awesome. Perfect. Thank you. All right, um, we are going to move on to next item of business. <clears throat> uh, resolution to fund food for finals. James, are you still with us? Uh, yeah, I'm here. I'm just sharing it in the chat real quick. Hooray, thank you. OK, so uh, pretty short. I'll turn my camera on so you guys can actually see I exist still. Um, pretty much short, simple and sweet. Basically, what we're asking for from the PR committee is that the council um, allocate five thousand dollars so that way we can start funding and planning food for finals for the spring or this spring. Um, the other thing is, is that we are basically delegating as a council to the PR committee the um, the event planning and setting. Uh, so the PR committee will be in charge of that. And then, of course, if anyone wants to join in on planning, they are more than welcome to. Uh, but that's pretty much like the meat of the resolution. So $5,000 towards funding food for finals and charging the PR committee with uh, the planning of this event. 
I would motion that we move into discussion. I second that. Right. Um, motion to move into discussion. We will go by opposition. Is anybody opposed to going into discussion? Excellent. And because I am a writer on this, I will pass the uh, the torch to Dan to lead discussion. Floor is open. Mike. So just a few questions. So um, five thousand dollars sounds good. Whatever. Um, but my question is: So what are the details of this? Um, I, are we going to do use the same caterers last time? It's going to be the, the resolution, but I yeah, not read it. So let's just like to ask James. So basically, this is just allocating the money. We're still figuring out uh, details and plans. That's something that's being discussed currently in the PR committee. Uh, we're introducing this one because we want to get the ball rolling so that we're just prepared as early as possible um, so that way we can make the event um, better. Not saying the last one was bad, but so we can improve upon it. Um, I don't believe as current talks we're going to use the same caterers, um, but again, we're still working out those details. Love it. Perfect. Thank you. OK. Paul. Um, I, I think this is an excellent resolution, James. I read it already and I, I, I agree with the, the planning aspect of it. And um, so we, we can secure the funding and we're prepared for food for finals. It doesn't you know, come up and hit us in the face. And so I'm happy to help with, with planning at any point if, if, if there's a way I can help. Um, and then I would just also encourage that like last time we have uh, options that are kosher, halal, you know, vegan, other things like that so that we can feed all our students. Um, Thanks, Paul. Yeah, we are definitely going to keep that in mind when we're planning. So, but yeah, thank you. And of course, if you want to help uh, plan on this, you're more than welcome to join. Anybody else? Any further discussion? Not a call to question. I second that. All right. On the vote. Mike. Yes. Gabe. Yes. Paul. Yes. Bree. Yes. Dan. Yes. Chad. Yes. Alex. Yes. Alan. Yes. James. Yes. Stephanie. She said yes. Naomi here. OK. All right. Well, Naomi has texted me yes for her vote on food for finals. OK. Even without the verbal vote, but with that vote, yes. Oh, oh, yes. Naomi said yes. Thank you, Paul. All right, it passes unanimously pass. Thanks, Council. Thank you, James. We will go on to item D, referendum to solidify the vision and mission. Uh, let me find this real quick. Any year a godsend. All right. Cool. So um, this is a referendum to solidify the vision and mission statement. So this would go on the ballot um, along with uh, the voting for candidates. Candidates. Um, hope everybody read this. Basically, this would lock down our current vision and mission statement by a popular vote of the student body during voting on uh, April 10th to the 14th. Whole purpose for this is that I believe that the vision and mission statement that we crafted, uh, the vision is uh, is well defined and to the uh, the idea of what TSAC is supposed to accomplish and the mission is all encompassing um, that it it serves every student on this campus, regardless of uh, of. Any demographics that they might uh, identify as um, and it has a quick explanation of it gives what the mission and vision is. And then if we could scroll down just a little bit, um, it goes into what uh, the specific question is. Should these statements be the active and binding vision and mission statement of the MSU Denver uh, student government? 
and then it'll have just two options, yes or no. And the only way that this could then be changed after that is by a, a vote of the student body in a similar referendum. Any questions? Let's go into discussion. <laughs> go ahead. Alex. So the voting on this uh, for option A or B will be the entire student body of MSU that or is this within the council? This is a referendum that goes out to every student that decides to vote during the week of April 10th to the 14th. Okay. So this would be on the same ballot as everybody else is that um, is running for student elections. Okay. Okay, cool. Got it. Mike. Oh. And Paul. So just a quick um, procedural question then. So this is going to, so the way I've interpreted this as um, there's two ways to get a referendum on the ballots, a, a majority of like signatures, I believe from student body, and then we as student government can place anything on the referendum or on the ballot for referendum um, subject to how much of a vote? Two thirds? Jordy, that's an elections code question. One second. Just curious. Yeah. I'll have your answer in just a bit. Sounds good. Paul. Uh, I, I agree with the uh, sentiment that like the spirit of this. Um, and I also think that, you know, should this pass, we need to make sure that we actually do it. You know, to have an equal distribution of power, we need to make sure we don't have meetings where other counselors are excluded. You know, um, it's that simple. So I, I, I just, uh, I agree with the meaning and everything. I am somewhat, I'm antsy about it. Once we, once it's in, uh, will the next council carry it out? And if, if they don't, how exactly are we planning to enforce this? You know, if we're talking about equal distribution of power, we need to make sure that we're not having meetings that aren't made available to the public, aren't made available to the rest of the council. There have been meetings this last semester that I didn't even know about until after the fact, and that's not equal distribution of power. So um, I, I, I support this simply because I think it could be a major step in correcting course correction on that kind of um, behavior. Uh, Mike, I have an answer to your question. Uh, Elections Code Article 2, 3.7 referenda may be proposed to be placed on the ballot in two ways. Any referenda which adjusts student fees must go through a secondary approval process as laid out in 3.8. Um, a, by way of SGT SAC referendum, an item may be proposed for the ballot to be voted on. It does not explain si simple majority or um, super majority. Okay. Fair enough. Just asking. Unless there's other discussion, I'd like to motion to call the question. No, this, second uh, the piece of business. Second. Seconded. Okay. Moving on to vote. Also, the point of order, we should vote by opposition on this. I think it's fairly supported. But that's up to the chair. Is anybody opposed to this referendum solidifying the mission and vision? Going twice. Hearing none. All right, it's been passed. Excellent. Um, quick next steps. I will send this over to our elections team um, and have this uh, to have it available for them to put onto the ballot. All right, we're going to go on to resolution to mobilize MSU Denver. Mike, you have the floor. Yes, and I am going to read my resolution. Um, that we're talking to and I want to read it. So uh, do you mind pulling it up, Kenny? And then this is just a little context for the council and anyone who might be listening. So this resolution is a direct um, direct action um, for um, because a few, a few um, sorry, a few weeks ago, a member of the public came in requesting um, assistance um, with mobility on campus. They requested a bike um, because a lot of issues with our budget and legally we cannot give one individual bike so um this was the alternative that thank you very much so for armando for giving me giving us the idea and help facilitating this um i appreciate it and 
a little bit of a call to the council, to the people who promised that individual bike, well knowing that they could not do that. Um, also, I mean, none of you all worked on it either. So, no, I had to take this on because, to be honest, I didn't trust anyone else to do it. I mean, no one else can do it. So, but this is. So. Uh, point of order: We aren't to we are to refrain from attacking a member's motives when discussing business. We can speak to the likely consequences of the proposed measure, but we are not to um, impugn their motives or motivation in conducting the work here. Fair enough. So anyway, that's my motives for writing this resolution. So thank you. So let us go on. Whereas transportation is a significant concern for students at MSU Denver, it can be often challenging for students to get to and from campus, especially those who live off of campus. Whereas ride hailing services such as Lyft have become increasingly popular alternatives to traditional transportation methods and have proven to be convenient and affordable option for students. Whereas MSU Denver student government recognizes the importance of providing safe and reliable transportation options for its students. Whereas MSU Denver student government has identified a need for a lift program to be implemented at MSU Denver to provide transportation options for all of its students or for its students. And therefore, be it resolved that MSU Denver student government fund a lift program which will be implemented at MSU Denver starting the fall of 2023. Um, <clears throat> the MSU D Denver student government shall allocate funds to provide lift ride credits to students who sign up for the program. The pro program shall be available to all currently enrolled MSU Denver students and shall be advertised through various channels of communication, campus channels. The program will operate under a three phase, um, three period phase in structure, starting first with a select budget, then after each phase increasing until at full capacity. The program shall be structured as followed. The MSU Denver student government shall allocate funds to provide lift ride credits edg uh, to eligible students. The fund um, provided will equal about 10, or 10, a uh, little, a thousand bucks a month. Um, eligible students shall be defined as currently enrolled students at MSU. Once enrolled, students shall receive a specific number of ride credits per month. Ride credits shall be valid for use within a designated geographic area or geographic area, the area campus, which the MSU Denver student government shall define. Um, the program shall have tri annual renewal period to be conducted by the MSU Denver student government budget committee to assess its effectiveness and make any necessary adjustments. Uh, if you want to scroll down. Be it further resolved that the MSU Denver student government shall work with Lyft to ensure safe and reliable transportation to all or of all MSU Denver students. Lyft shall be required to adhere to all applications, <clears throat> safety, and licensing regulations, and shall provide adequate insurance coverage for all drivers. MSU Denver student government shall work with Lyft to establish a system of monitoring and reporting any safety and security concerns that arise during the program's operation. The resolution shall start the process with MSU Denver student or. Resolution, this resolution shall start the process with MSU Denver legal team to negotiate the contract. This resolution and program must be renewed every academic year. Thank you. And um, can you scroll to the top because I was kind of rushed in, rushed in between this, um, but um, it's written by me and endorsed by Alex, James, Taylor, and Dan. Thank you. Let's open up the floor to discussion questions. Bree? Um, the Naomi, then Paul. Alex. Just to bulletproof this in some way, if we, if we have a major uptake, significant, and we are well over the budgeted amount per month, is this something that we should phrase as like a beta test for the first term and then reevaluate it and see if we can get additional funding for this? Because if we, I'd hate to let people down if we're setting this in place we voted in and then for a full year and then it collapses you know because we can't afford it yes so to answer your question um there's two kind of assurances in here um because that was it that was something that was brought up during the meetings that we had with the representative from lyft so um there's it's a we're gonna roll it out in three phases because the last thing i want to do is put this out there at full capacity and watch it collapse and us having to retract some of it so um and this is just to get this through legal, this a lot of this motion just get this legal. This has to be renewed next council. So next council needs to choose to approve this. And um, if I'm on next council, I will, we will address that problem there. But um, my goal was to roll this out in three phases: select kind of groups at first, and then kind of until we're at full capacity to prove that we can actually make this work. 
So, and um, that's why it needs to be revalued three times a year, three times an academic year. Thank you, Naomi. Um, so, I, this is kind of um, a question. Okay, question. Um, so, with the budget kind of concern of that, I mean, I think it'd be cool if we asked MSU Denver to like match us on the budget. Like that way, we can have more money to allocate. So, even though we're doing these reevaluations, like at least we're getting double the funding now. So we have to. We'll see that the um, we'll see that the outputs are going to match what we have, and then that way we can also get more money for you know possibly having to cover shoot if we need the entire university, you know, like we are a commuter school. Um, and then once they get housing built, we can reevaluate from there. But I mean, we're looking at like probably a good 10, 12 years before that happens. So yeah, um, just a thought. No, I completely agree. Um, this is going to start out as a student government initiative, but I would love it if MSU would either match us or take on some of this burden with us. Um, it's yeah, I mean, it's a it's a problem that's been identified on this campus, and I 100% agree with that. I will I will work for that. Alex. Oh, so I have two things. Uh, the first one is I noticed there was a typo because it says that it's going to start in the fall of 2023 and that's already passed. So I think it, I think you meant 2024. Uh, right, fall of 2024. Oh, so yeah, no, OK, never mind. I'm, never mind. Ignore me. Ignore me. Ignore me. Never mind. Sorry. Um, and then I guess the other thing, too, was um, we should do some kind of initiative potentially with the PR committee. Once this do, once this does roll out, to let other students know, because as it stands, I think the only student who really knows about this project is the individual who came in and asked about the bike. Um, so, if there was like a way that we could advertise how to do it, who qualifies? Because I, I believe there's a clause in there about qualifying students, um, and, and then just sort of a step by step process about how students can can utilize this resource. Um, I don't it, I don't think it needs to be included in the resolution, obviously, uh, but Potentially, this could be something that is done in the future within our office, or we have it advertised, we put it on the Roadrunner site, our own site, et cetera, et cetera. Yes, um, I 100% agree. Um, this is going to require a robust marketing campaign for this to be effective. Um, and um, I'm not sure how we're going to get there. I mean, that's next in the process. This is just to get this through legal. Um, I see our PR chair smiling over there. But um, so, um, this is just the starting steps. Um, this is, like I said, this is going to be need to be renewed next academic year by the council, and um, that's something we're going to have to work on is how we want to market this thing. Paul well, hasn't spoke as much as me, so if you can. Gabe, progressive stack. Thank you, Paul. Awesome. So I just have like two, like one question and then like one suggestion. One question is for like the renewal will it be then like. That each council renews it every semester, every end of council year, every beginning of the council year. When is that timeline? And then for the suggestion, um, I think also, you know, I know that it's like just for like the legal things and all that stuff, but really working with like the care center could really help with this to really identify which students are in need of this service. Awesome. Cool. All right. So um, let me answer the latter one because that's most recent in my memory. Um, I love it. Let's work with the care center. Um, I don't. If we can add it, here we can somewhere too. Um, but uh, I think it's a great resource. Um, they're bound to be uh, on the journey eventually, but I think this is something that um, they would be very interested in as well. Your first question. Um, what was your first question again? No. Yeah, you're good. The first question is when would the other student government need to approve it? Yes. So um, it is undetermined. Um, most likely. At the beginning of the year. Um, so one thing that I did not do this year that I'm going to recommend that councils do next year is pass a budget. Um, pass a budget that will have this allocated right at the beginning of the year. Um, though with the caveat that um, this is this is TSAC, we can kind of do whatever we want. Everything is up to review, nothing's set in stone here. So um, it's up to the discretion of the council. Um, this will be full access to next council. If I'm on next council, I'll bring it up. If not, I would suggest that the council bring it up. Next council bring it up. So Thank you. So I want to offer my critical support of this resolution and um, say that I appreciate the work that Armando, our advisor, and Mike have put into it in addition to um, collaboration from other counselors. I really do appreciate it. And I think it's a really meaningful step towards um, helping bridge accessibility gaps at our university. Um, you know, being able to get to campus is a, is a gap in itself. Um, 
I, I do uh, support the measure. I would oppose uh, means testing, and, and it, just in the fact that means testing itself adds cost to to doing something, even if that's not a cost that we're immediately seeing by paying for the program. Um, the folks at the care center, if they take this on, you know, that's part of uh, you know their duty. Or if if we're taking that on, this is all a cost that we we should consider. And um, and I think that you know if you go to MSU you need a little help, materially speaking, in getting access to resources. You know, this isn't an incredibly rich school. Um, and so I would I would caution in the next year when we consider the implementation of this, um, and I too will support it if reelected, uh, I want to say that um, we consider striking any means testing and or uh, considering, considering avoiding it. I kind of see that as like erecting a hoop. And then for the critical part, that was, it wasn't, wasn't the critical part, but the critical part of my support of this is I understand, uh, you know, Lyft operates on a very exploitative business model, as does many gig economy type apps, right? They're not incredibly transparent with how much the drivers are getting paid versus how much the ride itself costs. And I know that there have been workers here in Denver who have tried to, you know, organize around this issue so that they can make a change about that. So it is a little bit more transparent. And so drivers get a larger share of the work that they're doing. And I want to say that a good way we could follow up the passage of this resolution is maybe by a statement or other other measures we could take um, to condemn those exploitative practices. And um, since we have this contact with Lyft, maybe we can work collaboratively to, you know, kind of bridge those different conversations and maybe um, encourage some change on how that operates. I know a lot of our students are gig economy workers, um, and I just want to consider them too when we're passing this. Is that uh, you know, I don't I think if we can do both of these things, the passage of this isn't necessarily like the MSU Dem MSU Denver student government stamp of approval on a on a business that relies on the exploitation of a lot of gig economy workers. Um, and so uh, if anyone's interested in that latter aspect, um, get with me and we can we can work something out to follow this up with so we can have a good and balanced approach to the implementation of this program. I still support it. That guy used Lyft, so I'm not going to be a hypocrite here, but um, I just wanted to talk about that element of it. Thanks, Paul. Alex? Um, I also want to say that I support this. Um, and then to kind of add to what Gabe was saying, I think also the Access Center would be a really good good place to kind of figure out like which students are going to need this most of all. Um, and But therein lies some confidentiality issues. Uh, so that is something that we might have to talk to the access center about if the needs based model is something we want to keep um, or the council in the future if they want to keep that. You know. um, either way, I'm still support it. Thank you. Mike. Um, so I'll just say this now. It'll be my commitment to this body that I will bring this up with the director of the access center um, as well as the, the student care center as well. So. Um, I will make that commitment. To, I will follow up on this. Thank you. Any other counselors? Paul? I just want to reaffirm what I said about means testing. If we work to, uh, you know, assign which students can access, access this program and don't, that is a non-zero amount of money that the university, even if it's not just our, our, our group here, will be putting towards the means testing of students who would want to apply for this program. And so I want to again urge some consideration on that. And we should question whether or not that hoop is going to help us more than it'll hurt us or hurt the students. So. Chad. I think that testing of a, a service like this that hasn't been brought to this campus yet is a, is a thing that needs to happen in order to figure out like what scale this can be. Uh, this can show too. Um, I think the resolution is well written as it stands. Mike? Just a point of clarification. When you mean when you mean means testing, you mean the phased rollout that I want to implement? No, not necessarily. I'm just talking about and I, I too support it as it is written here. I don't want to, you know, get in the way. I don't necessarily want to propose we amend this document at this point in time. But when implementing it next year, we should be really mindful of considering the erection of hoops for folks to jump through to access this program and whether or not it would help or hurt us. I definitely want to agree with, you know, the need to assess this program, you know, gather data on how it's being used and, and work mindfully and, and like 
like Ree was saying, you know, this is a beta test. We'll see what works, what doesn't. And, you know, be dynamic into the future working with it. I just, again, more specifically to just like means testing for this program, I would oppose uh, the implementation of that next year. But I too support it as it is written. Like, yes, um, <clears throat> I think that's a conversation that I'm opening up to the council. Um, I'm going to contact the Access Center and the Care Exchange Care Center, um, and we'll talk about that because they may have some solutions that we don't know, that I don't necessarily know. But um, I think we can definitely work on that. I I share that sentiment. Mm -hmm. So, chat. I'd like to call a question. Seconded. Seconded. You vote. Mike. Oh. Yes. Gabe. Yes. Paul. Yes, for me. Naomi. Yes. Bree. Yes. Dan. Yes. Chad. Yes. Alex? Yes. Alan? Yes. James? Hi. Stephanie? Stephanie's yes. All right. <clears throat> Unanimously passes. Thank you, Council. All right. Um, quick next steps. So, Mike, um, will you work with our advisors to send this to, to legal to get that process started? As I have a feeling our Beautiful. It's already are sent. It's all good. All right. Um, we will move on to the next item of business, which is item G, uh, resolution for ICWA, uh, the Indigenous Resource Committee. You have the floor. Um, I just want to emphasize on this real quick um, that we did consult NISA on this, but they did not endorse it, um, but they did collaborate with us to help us get some better um, advice on looking at the stats that we will be providing in here. Um, I just really wanted to emphasize that last part because um, we did not get permission from them to put them on as an endorsement. So, yeah. Thank you, uh, Paul. Take it away. Thank you. And I, too, want to make note of a, a little addition or a little edit I made. Um, I, I moved some folks that had collaborated with me from the written section to the collaboration section. This isn't to reduce in any way the way in which you all participated, but just to recognize more honestly how uh, the production of this document was created. Um, they played a major role in making sure this this document came together and was good and it went through several revisions. Um, and uh, you know, I think if you if you could scroll Kenny down to the therefores, I can kind of get into the meat of the thing. Um, largely though, this resolution is created to mobilize students in defense of the Indian Child Welfare Act. Um, and it's under it's currently under question by the Supreme Court. They could call a case up at any moment, um, though likely to be so in the summer. But we want to mobilize students around and the community, student organizations around defense of this program. It's been critical. Now, um, unless anyone wants to motion to have the full thing read, I'll just go and kind of go through the meat here. Um, go back up a little bit. Thank you. And so, therefore, we condemn policies that have historically allowed for Indigenous children to be taken from their families and any actions our country has taken to hurt Indigenous people. We urge our national government to fulfill its responsibilities and expectations laid out by their own treaties and ICWA. Therefore, be it hereby further resolved, the student government will hold an event in our office, encouraging students to write, call, contact our legislatures in response to this attack on ICWA in the courts. The date and time of this event will be decided at a planning meeting between the SGTSAC, NISA, and any other student organizations or community participants. Uh, SGTSAC will in, uh, extend an invitation to co-host student organizations interested in collaborating on this effort. SGTSAC will use $150 from our budget for the acquisition of 20 poster boards, some permanent markers, some coffee and lemonade for participants, and any action to defend ICWA. Funds not used after the event will be returned to the budget. That's that's the material ask here. And so I'm uh, motion to call this into discussion or bring us into discussion. Me. Um, I just want to first say thank you for really working really hard on this, um, all of you, to get this resolution uh, written. Um, I would just like to emphasize I did not actually write anything in here. I just did the consulting services between NISA and um, uh, Paul because he's unable to make those meetings. Um, and just kind of express to you guys like how important this is, um, especially once again, referring to the consistent harm that Indigenous students are being put on um, or being put under in, on this campus. Um, 
I think that this is a good step forward in trying to make things right and to just show that we see them because invis invisibility is racism, right? Like if you don't acknowledge us, that's racist. Like it, it just is. You need to be able to see us. You need to see that we're still here. We're not living in teepees. Not all of us live on reservations. Not all of us get checks. Actually, the majority of tribes don't get checks and majority of reservations are also very poor. Um, and the reason why I'm saying these things is because we're unseen. Right. And this passing this resolution and resolutions that are around indigenous um, folk is giving us the opportunity to be seen on these platforms and shown that our problems are being noticed because majority of the time they're never advertised on their news or never advertised in, you know, uh, any kind of newspaper that isn't like written by an indigenous person. So a lot of people don't even know about it. A lot of people don't even know about what's going on, you know, so um us passing this is just trying to show up for them and show them that we care, we do see you, we do hear you, and we are trying to support you. So I really hope that you all can get behind this and pass it. Um, and just, I mean, $150, um, you know, we've consulted with um, the budget committee um, immense times, and I'm sure $150 is nothing for us. And um, we just really need to provide that space, especially in a time like this for our indigenous students going through what they are right now. Um, so I encourage you to just kind of keep that in mind when you're thinking about this. So thank you. Thanks, Paul. Yes, um, so um, in reference to that, um, just, um, just a thought, um, the budget committee has a sizable budget and this is within our capacity. Um, this vote here would kind of, we don't have to do a vote in budget committee. Um, I just suggest or like reference like, hey, do you want to use our budget? Low, our low two fifty dollars budget we have? Yes. Wait, I didn't. Section $2,050, the budget committee budget that we have for okay. small allocations. Okay. This fits well within um, that uh, time that uh, the constraints of the bill that passed that. So um, I just say, hey, let's take it out of that budget. We have plenty of money. Paul, then I'll go. Oh, no, you go ahead. I've spoken quite a bit this meeting. Um, how many students and student orgs do we anticipate utilizing and taking mm -hmm. advantage of this opportunity for or to have these poster boards and do an action? I know if I could probably think of two or three, though I anticipate once we raise this call, we'll get more participation than we expect. Um, and so, you know, we got that lovely paper cutter and we can maybe turn 20 into 40 if we're effective about this and um you know and yeah i'm uh, and i have some spare signs in my office too that are just unfilled and maybe i can contribute to this effort to help mitigate any sort of gap that might come up thank you i can Go also ahead. speak on that as well um i think that this is just student orgs and stuff but keep in mind we are opening this up to the community as well so um, on my behalf, I, whenever we can come up with a date, if it does get overturned, which I'm going to just put it in the universe, it's not. Um, but we will be reaching out to the community. And I'm thinking like the Denver Indian Center, um, you know, uh, mm, we'll talk about that. Um, but like just in different um, student, different places with indigenous students and community members, period. So there will be, I'm hoping to shoot for 60 to 80 participants um, because when our people get riled up, especially about something like this, um, they're very passionate, but we try to stay as peaceful as we possibly can. So the $150 may only go so far, but we will rally together. This is just what we're asking from TSAC. Real quick, Alex has a direct response as well. Um, I just wanted to add that I have some of my own personal paint and brushes and so forth in the TSAC office that is more than open to be used for this protest or any other further protests. Thanks, you will go recognize Dan and then Paul. Oh, did you just go? I yeah. apologize. We'll go to Paul. Yes. I'm a little sidebar. So um, I wanted to say that this accomplishes more than just what's laid out. There are other objectives that our student government has laid out explicitly, engagement, uh, environmental sustainability, and this does both. And I can explain why. The engagement, I mean, you know, democracy is a lot more than just voting, folks. You know, sometimes you got to hit the street. Sometimes we got to call our legislature. Sometimes we've got to, you know, use our voices while we still have them. And this does a lot of that. And so we're talking about engagement at the very direct and physical level with our students. And maybe by bringing them into our office, we bring in people who maybe would want to run next year. We bring in people who maybe would come into public comment and speak about what's going on and 
raise issues to our attention that we might not be aware of. So there's that. The environmental sustainability half of this is I would encourage folks to look into who's funding these suits that are reaching the Supreme Court because it's big oil, it's natural gas, and it's people who have their eyes set on indigenous and native territory. And they want to use these lawsuits to help weaken sovereignty over these spaces so that they can get permits to drill, baby drill, and do further harm to these communities and to our earth and risk the future. And so this isn't just a defense of ICWA, it's a defense of indigenous and native sovereignty, it's a defense of our biosphere, and there's a bigger picture here that's worth looking at and taking into the context. Taking in the context. I also think 150 bucks can buy a lot of lemonade, so it, you know maybe it can go a lot farther than we think. I would encourage everyone to vote yes on this. Um, you know, democracy is a good thing. Um, yeah. yeah, just to kind of thank you, uh, just to piggyback off of that, um, the way indigenous peoples are is we, we believe that we are all interconnected, right? And we are connected to the earth. That is who we serve. It's not that this land, um, belongs to anybody. And by protecting indigenous people, you are protecting the land. So, um, that's what this is about. They take away the land, they take away us, because that is what we are about. That is literally our identity. Um, so by taking away, you know, by supporting these people, yeah, you're going to end up, uh, you know, taking away more and more children from our people, which is going to then lessen us and it's going to continue to assimilate us. And by that point, they're not going to want to be able to have the, the traditions and the cultural connections they need to protect the lands in the way that they've known their entire lives. Um, and therefore, the government that will leave us susceptible, more susceptible again to have our land shipped from us or the land, I, I can't say taken, but occupied by the government again in order to further develop and destroy it, as we've seen. Shoot, just look around you. Um, yeah. Any other discussion that we'd like to go into? All right. Motion to call the question. Second. And I would point of order, we should do this by opposition. It sounds like there's a lot of support in the room. Let's go around the table. Um, Mike. Yes. Gabe. Yes. Paul. Yes. Bree. Yes. Dan. Yes. Chad. Oh, yeah, right. Naomi. Yes. Chad. Abstain. Alex. Proudly, yes. Alan. No. Uh, James. Stephanie. Stephanie. Yes. Huh. It passes. Alan James wrote yes. Okay. Well, it passes. <laughs> Thanks, Council. Wonderful. All right. Um, that concludes all of our new business. Um, so we will move into closing. Thank you all, all for, for keeping updates short. I, we had a lot more time than I anticipated, but nonetheless, you all have an excellent weekend. Yes, Alex. Can this be an email? Yeah, I can. Right. Wonderful. <laughs> all right. Everybody, happy Friday. Have a great weekend. Thank you all.